gone now anyway. All right. So, Ms. Underwood, how would you like to proceed with Mr. Lepper? Your Honor, Mr. Lepper is charged with prisoner possession contraband, namely TCB. THC wax, right? Yes. Um, the offer on this matter is an attempt, mm -hmm. um, which would be an H grid, and I believe it's got, he was guideline between two to 17 and five to 17 on this matter. I've explained all that to Mr. Lepper. Mr. Lepper wishes to have this matter separate trial. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and where are you currently at? Uh, Adrian Correctional Facility. Here at Gus Harrison. Yes. Okay. All right. Miss, and this will be a one-day trial. Um, and I believe, I believe in this matter, the the court would couch to the low end of the guidelines. Am I correct? Yeah, I usually always do on these cases. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Lepper, do you understand the plea offer? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you have any questions about that plea offer? I don't have questions about the plea offer, but I would like to put on the record that I don't think me and her have the same interests at like hand. So can I put you behind the microphone, Ms. Underwood? Can you scooch? Only because the audio in my courtroom is not always the best. Okay. So go ahead, Mr. Leffer. Say it again. Uh, we've had multiple conversations. We don't agree on nothing. Uh, I haven't got no paperwork. I don't get no uh, conversations with her outside of when I come five minutes before court. It's... I don't understand how to proceed and trust that she has my best interest at mind. And I brought this up before. Okay. So, Mr. Lepper, a couple things. Um, back in the day when I was a public defender, it was a contract through the judges, which at the end of the day is not a good thing because you're supposed to be an independent agency. So we have the Lenawee County Public Defender's Office, which is an independent agency from the courts. And we appoint counsel and you receive your appointed counsel. If you don't like counsel, you have one of two options. You can retain counsel or you can go without counsel. The second thing I will say is that oftentimes attorney's advice may not be what you want to hear, but they're giving you what they believe the best advice is. And if you decide to go to trial, she will go to trial as she has done many, many times. And she always does a good job. Okay. But her job is to advise you of what she thinks is in your best interest. And that may not be what you think is in your best interest. And I understand that. Yep. So if you go to trial, she will prepare for trial with you. Um, when the pandemic happened, it just became more and more difficult to meet with inmates, especially with the Michigan Department of Corrections. But it's getting better now. Um, Ms. Underwood has before, if she's not able to get in to meet with them, She'll set an in-person conference at the courthouse where I give you time to meet and back here, okay? So we will always make those accommodations for you, okay? It's, just, it's, it's hard for me to understand because last time I went to trial was 10 years, almost 10 years ago. So if this is a whole different process, I don't understand it. And it's it's still the same process. I've always had attorneys come contact me, let me know. Especially. That was prior to the pandemic. I understand that. And even, even if it was just a, a Zoom, it would be fine. Okay. I've been telling her since day one, I want to go to trial. And she just keeps trying to push the cops and I'm, 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 ple I'm pleading my innocence. Well, and that's fine. But I think, you know, as I said, sometimes attorneys will say, this is what I think is best for you. And at the end of the day, it's up to you. So um, Your Honor, I will say that I've spent, I've sent Mr. Lepper two complete copies of all his paperwork at his request. Have you received them? I haven't just sent one, I've sent two. I've received one. Okay, so and what is it that you haven't received that you want? I mean, all I got was a police report. I didn't get nothing else as far as that goes. Um, is there a lab result or anything? I think I got the lab result too. Okay. That's a lot of times that's all we have. That's all you have. I mean, that's the evidence is a police report and a lab test. And then people will come in and testify, like probably the lab tech will come in and testify and the correction officers will testify. I mean, that's it. You know, there's not a whole lot. So, um, but Mr. Lepper, as I said, if Ms. Underwood has issues getting in to meet with you, which it has all changed since the pandemic. Um, I will schedule a conference here in person and have you brought over. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So, Ms. Underwood, I think this would be a one day trial. Yep. All right. So, Ms. Adams, and when is your, are you, do you have an out date right now? Yes. When is your out date? Uh, I want to say March 30th, 23rd. Of 2030? Yes. Okay. So, Ms. Adams, <laughs> um, I need a trial date, a one day. Um, not in a big rush. So, it could probably be in a, a couple months. That's fine. He's on Zoom. So this is in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Zachary Lawrence Allen Ladd, file number 24-21680FH, 24-21681FH, 24-21682. I'm sorry, just yawn. Um 21682FH and 24-21683FH. I have James Daly appearing on behalf of Mr. Ladd. And I have um, Christopher, no, Isaac Sneed, who's my prosecutor. Um, I'm going to go with Isaac Sneed appearing on behalf of the people. Mr. Daly, this is the date and time set for arraignment on all four of these files. Do you waive the reading of the felony information? I do, Your Honor. And um, how would you like to proceed today? Your Honor, there's been a proposed plea bargain offered to uh, Mr. Ladd. I went to the jail yesterday, gave Mr. Ladd a copy of the proposed plea agreement and indicated to him um, what the results of that uh, could be. I believe he is ready to take a plea at this time. Is that correct, Mr. Ladd? I wonder if I get a break out real quick with Mr. Daly. Can't hear him. Um, he, all right. So, Mr. Ladd, you're really far back. And I that was wondering if I can get a breakout room with Mr. Daly. Yep, yep. So, hold on a minute. So, um, Miss Underwood, would you be able to go in the back room and zoom in so Mr. Daly could use your laptop? Yeah, I'll just go over to the jail and see him. I saw him. Oh, yesterday. okay. He doesn't ever have anything to say when I get there, but I will talk to him in person. All right, so <laughs> Mr. Ladd, Mr. Daly is going to come see you at the jail. So I'm going to set this over. Do you want one week, Mr. Daly? That'd be fine. All right. Judge, so, yes. I'm sorry. He has two other matters that are set for a pretrial February 21st as well. Okay. And we do have two other files set for pretrial on February 21st. That'd be fine. But do you want me to set these all over like two weeks? Why don't we set them all for the 21st and right. if I can get it? I'm trying to get a resolution to resolve everything. Okay. So what I'll do is enter a plea of not guilty, Mr. Ladd, and I'm going to set this over for a pretrial in a couple of weeks on February 21. Don't talk over me and watch your language. Um, and I'm going to set it for, I'm sorry, Mr. Ladd, come sit down. I mean, cause this dude ain't done shit for me this whole time. No, you listen to me. This dude ain't done shit for me this whole time. No, you listen to me. You don't get to run your mouth and use curse words when you're in court. Because I can change all your bonds to a PR and give you a 93-day contempt. So don't. So Mr. Daly feels it would be better to come speak with you in person. So he's going to come see you in person. And I'm going to set all your files together for February 21 in a couple weeks. And we will see you back on that day at 8.30. Thank you. You're all set. You can go. All right. So February 21 at 8.30. <clears throat> Judge, was that Johnny Ladd or Zachary Ladd? That was Zachary Ladd. Oh, uh, yeah. Them Ladd boys are at it again. Okay. And Judge, Johnny Ladd is an MDOC. That's what the jail told me. Yeah, and um, I do not have him. Is Johnny Ladd here from the no. prison? All right, are you ready for your MBOC guy? You have anybody else with me, Mr. Daly? I don't believe so, Your Honor. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Daly. Thank you, Judge. Bye. Back. We're back on the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Ruth Romaine Hins. Mr. Glazier, have you had an opportunity to speak with Ms. Hins? I haven't, Your Honor, but I talked to her yesterday, so I don't need to talk with her again today. Okay, very good. Mr. Glazier, how would you like to proceed on behalf of Ms. Hens? Your Honor, uh, 
Um, I just received a, a few days ago uh, an offer on this case from Mr. Sneed, and I need to talk it over with my client in person. I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable just talking to her over the phone or over Zoom. So I'd ask to put this out a while to allow her to come down and meet with me here in person in my office. All right, February twenty eighth at eight thirty in the morning. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. So, Ms. Hins, today I need you to call and schedule an appointment with Mr. Glazier's assistant. And then I need you to go in and meet with him before we go to court that day, okay? I will try my darndest, ma'am. My uncle, my one uncle is actually sharing his car between two households. So I have to get a hold of them to figure out dates and times that are good and then send it over to Mr. Uh, Schleninski, I think is his last name, um, to get that set up, ma'am. Um, Mr. Glazier may be able to accommodate via Zoom in his office, so call and see what you, you can set up. Yeah, I don't. Yes, I, I really don't want to do it by Zoom, Your Honor. I'd rather have her here in person. Right, I understand, but that gives you about three weeks to try to get a day to get a ride, all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right, very good. We'll see you back on um, February 28th at 8.30 in the morning, okay? All right. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. You have a wonderful day, all of you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rose and Mr. Glazier. Or who did we decide had Mr. Rose? Mr. Malaro. So in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Donald Jack Rose, Mr. Malaro, how would you like to proceed on behalf of Mr. Rose? Uh, Judge, so uh, what we'd like to do, Mr. Rose, is amenable to uh, admitting the violation of failing to drug test and also the destruction of police property, uh, the shop retail fraud and intimidating Walmart. I think it was Walmart employees. He's not willing to admit to. And then we'd like to address the contempt charge. You kind of going in and out, Mr. Malaro. So um, bear with me for just a moment. So, Mr. Rose, um, the allegations, um, Mr. Rose was kind enough to actually send paperwork to take care of this, so we do appreciate that. So, we have contempt of court for failure to appear for violation of probation hearing on September 8th, but he might have been in custody, I'm not sure. And then the violation of probation is retail fraud in Painwell, Michigan, behaving in an assault of threatening, intimidating way towards Walmart patrons and refusing to submit a drug test. So is he pleading to all three of those? Your Honor, he's willing to admit to the failure to drug test. I think there's an also an allegation of uh, MDOP or destruction of police property. Oh, wait, there might be another one. He's willing to admit um, to no, we have an April of 23 failure to notify of his address, but I don't know. I think we might have, I just have, let me see here. Miss um, Ms. Teske, this is Mr. Stevenson's file. So it looks like, hold on. He pled on, he pled guilty already to the violation or, um, let's see. Looks like he pled guilty for failure to appear. And I don't so, got retail the, fraud. If I may, the um, July 19th, Mr. Stevenson's um, allegations says that um, committed a criminal act involving destruction of property on or about July 13th, 2023. That All right, the hold on a second. Video. Hold on one second, Mr. Malal. Let me sit down for a minute and see if I can go through this file. Hold on. That's all the files. So, all right. Hold on. Okay. All right. All right. So. How to appear for probation violation hearing. And then I have um, 
pretrial release order, incarcerated. So the failure to appear doesn't count. That would get dismissed because he was incarcerated. And disorder. All right, so it's another one. All right, so refused to submit to a substance test and engaged in assaultive, threatening or intimidating behavior against Deputy Anthony Esposito involving, and then another destruction of um, property. So, all right, I found it. So, Mr. Malaro, does he have any pending charges on all, any of these? Uh, Judge, the retail fraud, he informed he was dismissed. I don't know what's going on with Deputy Esposito. But he is in the Ellicott County Jail. He's going to be sentenced on those matters. He says on Monday. Um, on the one he pled to on on the Esposito file. Yeah, I don't know the details of what he's in the Ellicott County Jail for. So, Mr. Rose, let me ask you a question. We have a bunch of stuff. Um, so, I, I found it. There is a violation of probation that. You engaged in assaultive, threatening, or intimidating behavior against Deputy Anthony Esposito, and then mm -hmm. committed a criminal act involving destruction of property on or about July 13th of 23. Have you been charged for those offenses? I have not been. I didn't get charged with anything for um, Officer Anthony Esposito, but I did take a plea the malicious destruction of police property. That's what I'm being sentenced for on Monday. Okay. And so is it your understanding you're not being charged with anything involving specifically Deputy Esposito? Yeah, I had a conversation with Mr. with Officer Esposito, and I don't believe that I'm being charged with anything. Okay. And then, okay. And then on the retail fraud at Walmart and that behavior you've been charged with that too no uh, the retail fraud and that stuff got dismissed okay all right all right so mr laurel perfect all right so mr rose you want to raise your right hand do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth yes ma'am all right can um you can put your hand down state your full name for the record please donald jack rose all right, so Mr. Rose, you received all the paperwork and all these pending charges, have you not? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and do you understand that there is, and I'm gonna go through them again, on, let's see, July 19th of 2023, Mr. Stevenson filed a request and warrant for probation violation alleging that you violated your articles of probation dated 1229 of 22, and that you refused to submit to a substance test on or about July 13th of 23, that you engaged in assaultive, threatening, or intimidating behavior against Anthony Esposito and committed a criminal act involving destruction of property on or about July 13th of 23. And then on July 13th of 23, Mr. Stevenson submitted another request and warrant for probation violation, which alleges that you violated the articles of your probation by committing the act of retail fraud on or about July 12th of 23 at Walmart in Plainwell, Michigan, that you engaged in assaultive, threatening, or intimidating behavior towards Walmart patrons on or about that date, and that you refused to submit to a drug test on or about July 13th of 2023. So um, do you understand those are the charges against you? We're not getting good audio on you. I'm, I'm so sorry, Mr. Rose, it's not your fault, but do you understand those are all the charges? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you are currently on probation for MDOP 1,000 to 20,000, which you understand carries a maximum penalty of up to five years in prison. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now um, there also is a contempt of court for failure to appear, but I'm gonna dismiss the contempt of court because you were in custody at the time, all right? Yes. 
All right. Now, um, you would ask for court appointed counsel. We appointed Mr. Malaro to represent you. Are you satisfied with Mr. Malaro as your attorney and the advice that he's given you? Yes, ma'am. You understand that you do have a right to contest these violation of probation charges and um, to have a trial on them. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that throughout that trial, you would be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a re um, proven guilty by a preponderance of the evidence? Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. You have a right to have all the witnesses against you appear at your trial, to have your lawyer ask those witnesses questions, or you may ask them yourself, and to have me order any witnesses you might have to appear at the trial. Do you understand all of that? Yes, ma'am. On the other hand, do you understand that you have a right to testify at your trial if you want to testify? Yes, ma'am. All right, so on the July 19th of 23 violation, how do you plead to the charge that you violated the terms of your probation by refusing to submit to a substance abuse or substance test on or about July 13 of 23 and, and that you engaged in assaultive, threatening or intimidating behavior against Deputy Anthony Esposito and committed a criminal act involving destruction of property on or about July 13 of 23? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Right. And then how do you wish to plead to the charge on the July 14 of 23 summons or request a warrant for probation violation that you violated the terms of your probation by committing the act of retail fraud on or about July 12 of 23 at Walmart? In Plainville, Michigan and that you engaged in assaultive, threatening or intimidating behavior towards Walmart patrons on or about July 12th of 23 and that you refused to submit to a drug test on or about July 13th of 23. Guilty or not guilty? Judge, he would be admitting the value to drug test and not the retail fraud or the intimidation. Oh, that got dismissed. Okay. So it would just be pleading to um, refusing to submit to a drug test. So guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Okay. Fix this. <clears throat> All right. And um, do you understand by pleading guilty, you'll be giving up your right to a trial, as I've already explained to you? Can you say that again for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Has anyone promised you anything to get you to plead guilty? No, ma'am. Has anyone threatened you in any way to get you to plead guilty? No, ma'am. If I accept this plea, you will be giving up any and all claims that your plea is given as a result of promises or threats that were not disclosed to the court on the record during this hearing, that it was not your own choice to enter the plea. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Is it your own choice to plead guilty? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, Mr. Rose, um, you were placed on probation and you signed your articles of probation that were dated December 29th of 22. Um one of the articles was that you were to submit to substance abuse testing at the request of the probation department. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And on July 13th of 2023, did you submit to a test? Oh, ma'am. Okay. And you knew that you were required to? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then Mr. Malaro, um, he is pleading to the intimidating behavior against the deputy and the MDOP? Yes. Okay. So um, on July 13th of 23, were you in the, um, in the presence of a deputy, Anthony Esposito? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And was it his car that you did some damage to? Uh, I was just like, I was just arguing back and forth with them and being like yelling at them and stuff. The the MDOP was for a police vehicle in Allegan County. Okay. All right. So you came in contact with Deputy Anthony Esposito and you were yelling at him and behaving in a threatening manner towards him? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then at some point you got put in a police car, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, how did you damage that police car? I kicked the door in the police car. Okay. Broke. All right. Okay. 
Now on, um, okay, it looks like it's the same drug test on both violations, probation. So I think they just amended the probation violation, Ms. Teske. So yeah, sure, Honor. I'm just, I'm just going to accept it on that one. All right. Um, accept the pleas. They've been given understandably, voluntarily, and accurately. The defendant has full knowledge of his rights, and he does have competent counsel. So, Ms. Adams, the probation violation request from July 19th was amended from the July 14th one. So, I'm accepting the plea on the July 19th one and dismissing the July 14th summons and complaint, okay? All right, so I'm gonna refer this matter to the probation department for a pre-sentence investigation. So are you in Allegan County waiting sentencing on the MDOP? Yes, ma'am, I get sentenced on Monday. Monday, okay. All right, so Ms. Adams, um, um, Mr. Malara, are you available February 2nd? That's next Friday. I think it's next Friday. It's, yeah. All right. So, Mr. Rose, I'm going to set this over to February 2nd for sentencing. Yeah, yes, I'm available, Judge. Okay. And I'll set it for sentencing at 8, 8 a.m. And Ms. Teske, I know he's in Allegan County. Does Mr. Stevenson want to zoom with him right now i'll ask him real quick your honor and the only reason I've, i say that mr rose is all the jails are so busy and i've got you're kind of a captive audience so i might see if mr stevenson will talk to you now okay yes. so we'll set sentencing for next friday at 8 a.m and um mr rose you have the right to be present in person or you can appear via zoom what would you like um via zoom Okay. All right. Ms. Mr. I'll Stevenson's joining three. on this Zoom so that he can have a breakout room with him. Okay. What were you going to say, Mr. Rose? I was just saying uh, I will be incarcerated next Friday. So. Yep. Still at Allegan, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Ms. Adams, you've emailed back and forth with them. We'll be able to get them. Yep, I will give it a try, Judge. Okay. All right. So we do have uh, Joel Thompson we contact, so we'll set that up. So, Mr. Rose, thank you, Mr. Malaro. Mr. Rose, just bear with us a moment. Mr. Stevenson's going to log in, and then I'll put you in a breakout room with them. He'll prepare the report, be truthful about what's going on. We'll get that report to Mr. Malaro. Mr. Malaro will try, but he probably won't be able to Zoom with you in advance. So if he's not able to we will um, give him an opportunity to speak with you that morning, all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Malaro. And all right.